Dave Scheiderer. I'm the Director of Education at Integrative Psychiatry, Inc., headquartered in beautiful Sarasota. Thanks for being with us today. What I want to do is just briefly go over a high-level kind of overview of my top 10 health tips. I have cleverly called them Dr. Dave's Top 10 Health Tips. All right, so this is a 10 or 11 slide presentation. Each slide will actually end up being its own mini uh, semester uh, in a larger curriculum. But for today's purposes, I just want to get through all 10 tips. These are not static. They're dynamic. They're ever-changing. They are, however, those recommendations I most often make to my patients and clients and on my best days, uh, those which I try to inculcate into my own life. I will tell you right up front, however, I'm probably better at uh, preaching than practicing. The first is clean up your act, uh, which is a shout out to the importance of ongoing detoxification. We live in a very toxic world. Uh, the things we eat, the water we drink, the air we breathe, are chock full of toxins, pesticides, hormones, antibiotics, you name it. Moreover, just the regular wear and tear of daily life and handling life slings and arrows and all the stresses we are constantly bombarded by and with at over your choice of preposition there is enough to create um, a lot in the way of oxidative stress, free radicals, um, things that build up faster than we can get rid of them. As such, it's important to, on an ongoing basis, be um, improving and supporting our mechanisms for eliminating, neutralizing, and eradicating these toxins. Be careful how you go about doing that, however, because uh, if your gut leaks, which I suspect it does, if you are inflamed or exposed to these toxins, and until you seal and heal that gut, you're just going to recycle the toxins. Uh, one of the things we see most often that causes symptoms in people who are trying to detox has to do with um, mobilizing these uh, poisonous toxins from your tissues, getting them to your bloodstream, but then they're rapidly reabsorbed because your gut leaks. And, and we'll walk you through how we go about eliminating toxins up front, but then also on an ongoing basis. Probably the single most important thing you can do to help um, treat most diseases of civilization, help build and maintain health, is to get your adequate sleep. I know Grandma said get your eight hours, and she was likely right for most of us. Uh, well over 50% of Americans are sleep deprived. Much of this is what we call voluntary bed restriction. We know that too little sleep increases inflammation, increases insulin resistance, making you more vulnerable to a host of uh, medical problems including obesity, diabetes, metabolic syndrome, heart disease, dementia, cancers of some sort, depression, and on and on and on. So one of the first things I like to do, whether you're trying to treat that nagging depression, lose weight, just build health in general, is make sure you get adequate high quality sleep. Naturally we are what we eat, we are what we eat eats. Not only we are what we eat, we're, we are when we eat. All of these important uh, dietary tidbits and nuggets, some less flavorful than others, I fear, um, indicates that we really need to take our diet seriously. The two most common sources of neuroinflammation uh, these days, which are big drivers of most of the diseases I treat, most of the conditions I um, and called upon to, uh, to, 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 to treat, I guess, um, have to do with someone you met or something you ate. So that is a big player and really represents low-hanging fruit, pardon the pun, for getting you back on your healthful ways. Special shout out to my daughter Cecily and Sinclair who have helped me uh, with this slide presentation as well as um, helped with the, the transitions. I particularly like that last one, the curtains uh, coming across the screen. 
walk it off. Uh, simply meaning trying to get your 10,000 steps in. I, I uh, recommend people wear and, and use pedometers. Just the wearing of a pedometer increases the number of steps you take by 20%. 10,000 steps per day. Not easy to come by unless you're going for uh, dedicated and devoted walks. Is the number arrived at by both the American Heart Association and the American Diabetic Association as that number which is um, uh, optimizes uh, your um, your health, happiness, and longevity. Walking is not the only activity, but it is that which most of us can do. You can get 80 to 90 percent of the health benefits of running without all the wear and tear on your bones and joints and back um, by walking those 10,000 steps a day. I would not walk 10,000 steps in the same direction every day or you'll find yourself a long way from home after a while and perhaps lost. So maybe make it a circuitous route that leads you back to your original starting location. Helpful safety tip there. Uh, hmm. This is really a, a complicated, maybe even uh, down the road, a two-part uh, longer lecture. Uh, we specialize in integrative psychiatry and psychoneuroimmunology. Uh, that is a theory that purports uh, your genes, uterine experience, early life, adversity, choices and habits, combined with uh, contemporary life stressors, uh, pace, diet, sedentary, lifestyle, um, too little sleep, um, environmental toxins, um, too little vitamin D, you kind of get the picture. But all of that combined creates progressive imbalances among various physiological symptoms uh, to include your neurotransmitters, your hormones, your adrenal output, your immune reactivity. And we believe that many of these psychoneuroimmunological perturbations, PNIPs for short, can be measured, and so we measure them. This becomes our way of helping to personalize uh, your evaluation and your treatment so that we do a little bit less guessing. There's still a lot of art to what we do, that we do basically try to pin it to not only your symptoms, but also the extent or existing literature. And one way we do that is we measure your neurotransmitters. We measure your hormones. We measure your adrenal output. We measure various immune and, and, and inflammatory uh, markers. As well as we'll, we'll run your gut. We'll look for um, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. We'll look for micronutrients. But we believe um, very strongly in measuring so that we can you know, better focus and tailor, customize, personalize our treatment recommendations. Make new friends but keep the old ones. Social isolation is as deadly after the age of 50 as smoking cigarettes. Very important to have an expanding uh, network circle of friends and acquaintances as we get older. Uh, that's pretty self-explanatory. Slow down, you move too fast. That, of course, I won't sing to you. Usually people ask me not to sing rather than to sing. Uh, this is a reference to a, a very uh, old French adage. It is the pace that kills. Running this pace that kills really wears out our already overworked adrenal glands. Many of us live in a constant state of fight or flight. Our alarm systems are upregulated, i.e. hyperactive. And while we may be able to keep up in the short run, in the long run, it really wears out our adrenal glands, makes it more difficult for us to combat inflammation. We lose our resilience. Uh, in middle stages, we're wired and tired. Our brains won't stop, but our bodies won't go. And then in latter stages of adrenal exhaustion or adrenal fatigue, we're just plain tired uh, with lots of lethargy, fatigue, brain fog, lack of motivation, lack of concentration and attention. And that's a big part of what we uh, evaluate and treat in our practice. Practice gratitude and the other uh, G attitudes. The, there are data supported attitudes which correlate most strongly with health, happiness, and, and, and longevity. Gratitude is the, the grandpappy or grandmammy, not to be sexist. Uh, of all um, attitudes, according to Cicero, the Roman philosopher, 
Others, though, that we uh, focus on would be enthusiasm, interpretive style, or you know, fault finder or merit finder, curiosity, and optimism. And I have borrowed the Geico um, gecko uh, as, as kind of my mnemonic for that, where Geico stands for those five attitudes G, gratitude, E, enthusiasm, I, interpretive style, C, curiosity, O, optimism. I love this quotation by Al from Albert Einstein. I live in that solitude which is painful in youth, but delicious in years of maturity. Um, spend some time alone. I call this solitary refinement, but there's no uh, better way to reset all systems, um, try to practice being more in the moment than spending a little quality time with yourself. Many of us are not good at this. We're too busy. Uh, staying busy and trying to distract ourselves from our thoughts and feelings. So this is threatening for a lot of individuals, but it is crucial particularly when we are indeed running that pace that kills. Lastly, a lot of you are going to say to me, because you do when you're in my office or I'm talking to you on the phone, and that is, Dave, I already know all this stuff. To which I would reply, okay, comma, hot shot, Comma, then why don't you do something about it? And that then becomes a, a, a huge opportunity. And back in the day, it would have been for psychotherapy. Now I use a lot of coaching and just plain old um, education, a lot of nagging, browbeating, not so much. Uh, but you get the drift. And this leads me to another one of my favorite quotations. The breach between what we know and what we do is lethal. So if we know we need to be doing all of these things, getting enough sleep, washing what we eat, getting our 10,000 steps in every day, making new friends but keeping old ones, detoxifying on a regular basis. We know we ought to do those things, but yet we do not. What is that gap, that lethal breach between what we know we ought to be doing and what we actually end up doing? Well, then that is a nice opportunity to identify those barriers to change. That's a big part of what I do for my folks on a, on a daily basis. In summary, then, you see from this slide, clean up your act, sleep on it, eat your vegetables, walk it off, go to mediation, i.e. not meditation, but measure those mediators of your symptoms, psychoneuroimmunological perturbations, make new friends but keep the old ones, change of pace, address that. You'd move to fast, the G attitude, solitary refinement, and once more unto the breach, um, borrowing from Shakespeare. Of course, there's a lot more to this story. I would encourage you, if you have not already, or if you're interested, to give, uh, give me a call. I'm Dr. Dave. There's my number, 1-800-385-7863. You could also visit us online at integrativepsychiatry.net. I think that's all I want to do today. Um, let me know what you think. We're trying out a new way of getting out information. I hope to follow this uh, video, um, follow this up with, with a, a whole series of, 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 of other ones, new ones, maybe even with something useful next time. Until then, Dr. Dave, thanks for tuning in.